Not much of a future in store for my husband, my child, or myself. I don't see any point in my writing into the papers. It's not going to do any good, no more than haunting the local TD and councillor has done. You get the same treatment all the time. Anyway, people just read the papers and forget the stuff that doesn't make big headlines. Or those who don't find themselves in these circumstances naturally don't care. I'll admit this. I realise the housing situation, as far as the corporation is concerned, is a big problem. It's a waste of time for young married people to bother. They say they have to deal with the big families. So unless every young engaged couple have saved at least £500 for to try and put a deposit on a house without having as much as a stick of furniture to go in it, they may as well abandon the idea of getting married at all. My opinion, it is the biggest problem the country is faced with. Homes for the future generation. A chance for the parents of the future generation. Emigration, it's not so much the single people anymore. It's the young married people who are giving up hope. Three of my own girlfriends and their husbands, each of whom has a small baby, like myself, have given up hope and gone with their savings to America. I don't know why I'm still pondering. Maybe I will have to join my friends yet. I'm still trying to persuade my husband to hold on a little longer that something will have to be done. Anyway, we're only a little more than halfway to the £500 mark. By the time we reach that figure, I shouldn't be at all surprised if they have the neck to raise it even more. It's all a race against time. You may as well bash your head against a stone wall. Instead of telephonists and farmers picketing government buildings, young people should be staging demonstrations about housing conditions. Something has got to be done. Ballymon, a corner of suburban Dublin. In three or four years, a whole new town will mushroom here. Now, Deputy Larkin, you're the chairman of the Housing Committee of, of Dublin Corporation. And can you tell me, why is there this constant backlog of supply being unable to meet demand? More people looking for houses than you have dwellings, houses and flats available. Well, this is a problem that is not new. It arises from the fact that uh, many, many years ago you had a situation where there was very serious overcrowding in, in the city. You had a situation where, uh, on an average, uh, families of six, seven and eight were living in one room. But as a result of the efforts, both uh, local and national, uh, since the early period, the late 30s and late 40s, the situation has changed dramatically. This is the site of one of Dublin Corporation's biggest and more ambitious housing schemes. More than 3,000 houses and flats, all of them with central heating, will eventually house something like 12 or 13,000 souls on this site. To those of you who are on the Corporation's housing list, this activity will be a heartening sight. For those who have the priorities and the means, for families living in overcrowded conditions or in dwellings which are adjudged unfit for human habitation, this great scheme, and others like it, rise like beacons of hope in a landscape which all too often is very short in that commodity. One of the problems in this, in this situation is the delay in getting approval for acquisition proposals for clearance areas, uh, delaying getting approval for building schemes, the tender for building schemes, for developing schemes, and very frequently the situation that arises from uh, the shortage of finances. In the case of Dublin Corporation, it was many years since they were able to finance their own schemes. Now, all over Ireland, or at least in urban areas, there's a chronic lack of cheap housing for what local authorities call the working classes. I'm not talking about people who can afford to pay £3,500 for a house, or £5,000, or £8,000. I mean council or corporation houses, local authority dwellings, which, broadly speaking, can cost as little as three shillings a week for a single room to over five pounds a week for a six-room dwelling. But your chance of renting one of these homes depends on a variety of circumstances, a variety of circumstances which are very carefully laid down by the Minister for Local Government. And they fall into a number of broad categories. One, 
someone who's displaced from what the corporation calls a reserve dwelling. Two, families in overcrowded conditions where there's TB in the family or in one room where children have reached the age of 12 years. This is what's known as sexual overcrowding. Three, families in houses which have been condemned as unfit for human habitation. And four, general overcrowding. This means where there are about a dozen or more people living in possibly one or two rooms. But even so, the young and the not-so-young married couples are finding it difficult or sometimes impossible to get suitable homes in spite of loans and legislation, grants and differential rents which are available. This is a human problem, a problem of tensions and difficulties, of despair sometimes, of hopelessness, of inadequacy. I bought a caravan and um, we moved into Kobe Square in Black Rock and the corporation came out there saying for uh, being there. They said some people around objected to our site and that we'd have to find somewhere else. Well, we just had to go away and again and start looking again for another site. So we've been here a year and we want to do the site a year. My husband goes out to work at half three in the morning. And then he comes back in at half eight for his breakfast and he wants to go to sleep. He can't go to sleep because I have to do washing and all the rest of it. I found empty houses that need repair, which I wouldn't mind doing myself because I'm, I'm not afraid of work. And then we went out. They, we asked about a loan on a house and um, they gave us loan forms and we went out and looked for a house at a 275 was their loan and we got a house at 250 but the ground rent on their house had to be 10 pounds but ours was 12. well they went back in about this and they said that that wouldn't do so i went to see a td about this and asked him could he do anything for me he said he couldn't that um my best way around that would be to um say go back home save up 500 pounds and give this as a backhander to the ground landlord to get the ground rent reduced on paper well, I mean, I haven't got £500 in no way of saving £500 in. And by the time I would save £500, the houses would have be gone up to blazes altogether. They tell, you, uh, they tell you to come to them. At least that's my opinion. They tell you to come to them when you have a house, but it's no use. You just don't get anything. They just have, they've no time for you. They have their own houses and their own money, and that's all they care. I think that criticism is completely invalid. A councillor can be of assistance because councillors are aware of how the priorities are at a particular time. They can be aware because of the reports, because of the discussion, where likely is uh, likely families of three or, fam or families of four or families of five may be offered accommodation. They may be able to advise people that if they put their application down for a different area, there's a better chance. For instance, if somebody insists on being listed for Cabra and at the particular time there may be houses available in Coolock, that they may lose an opportunity of being offered accommodation. On a wet day now, when the baby comes in and I'm asleep, well, I get up shouting at him naturally, you know, when he wakes me up. And then the same thing when I'm going out in the morning, I wake both of them up. There's a toilet here and running water. And that's all. That's you, all. No bathroom, no shower. No bathroom, shower, anything. nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Even, even the own. clothes we have to wear now, my wife has to take them from here and then to go to my mother. I bring them up to my mother's car and them, you know, we've no electricity. Well, the council are not doing their jobs. Obviously, because if I had as many people crying after me and my job, I wouldn't last a week. I mean, I'm waiting now to finish paying off my debts and I intend to emigrate. Because there's no use here. There's no use looking for a house here at all. It's like living in a leopard colony, you know. You're, you're waiting for God to come, but he's not coming. I can tell you that. It's perhaps a, a bitter irony that within 50 yards of this man's caravan, a scheme of local authority houses is being built. But that's very poor consolation to him, because his caravan is within the Dublin County Council area, whereas just across the road where the houses are being built, it's the area of the Dunleary Borough Corporation. But let's look at the facts. Since 1948, Dublin Corporation has built more than 21,000 new dwellings and has made nearly 12,000 loans for house purchases. Borrowers still owe more than £12 million on these loans at the moment. 
in this year of 1966, there are 1,644 corporation dwellings available, but there's a waiting list of just under 5,000 applicants trying to get into them. The statistics of money spent and efforts made by the corporation are naturally impressive. Since 1922, it's spent more than £58 million pounds on dwellings. But this year, of course, we've been told, the corporation, that the capital budget has been very seriously slashed. And this hasn't only affected our own direct house building, but it's affected substantially the people who want to borrow money from the corporation to build houses for themselves or to purchase their own houses. They've been affected even more so by uh, this credit squeeze. A moment ago, I told you that there were 5,000 approved applications on the Dublin Corporation housing list. And in terms of people, that represents something like 19,000 men, women and children. But how many more men and women and children in this capital city of ours cannot get on that list? cannot get on it because they don't qualify under the statutory regulations which are laid down. We got a furnished flat and uh, we were in it for well nearly two years and by that time we had two children. But, uh, the landlady, some of our family have come back from England and uh, she asked us to leave very politely and uh, so we had to move out last Friday and uh, we were to move up with our mother-in-law but uh, Unfortunately, she got sick and uh, some kind of an infection and the children couldn't go up. So happened, we had to move out on the Friday and uh, uh, my mother here took us in here in this house, which is a two-bedroomed house and uh, there's five of uh, my own family and uh, four of us. So you can imagine it's quite crowded. A family that have adequate living, living accommodation can feel the part of the community. Whereas the families who are separated, uh, living with a uh, uh, married man living with his mother and his wife living with her mother and maybe a child between one and the other, uh, this is no way for us to go on in a, in a, in a civilised community. Well, I've applied to the corporation uh, a number of times but uh, they told me that families of two have no hope for a house in the near future because uh, there are so many families in town in tenement houses and uh, condemned dwellings who get priority over this. Exactly. Well, now, well, what about a grant? Have you tried to get a grant from the corporation well, perhaps to buy your own house? A grant for me is impossible because uh, I don't get the wages and uh, I'd never be able to pay repayments on, a, on my own house. So really now you're thinking in terms of a flat rather than a house? Well, a flat you? at the moment is my only hope of there again, they're very difficult to get. Uh, a furnished or an unfurnished would do me, but uh, in both cases the rent is far too high for me. Criticism of people who are in need of accommodation and the failure to provide accommodation, the criticism is justified either whether it's against the corporation or against the Department of Local Government. D does the fact that you've got two children uh, have any effect at all, do you think, on, on oh, the difficulty yes, of getting Oh yes, certainly, there? yeah. Uh, well, you go to a flat on you, inquire about it and uh, I have you, have you got any children? Yes, I have two, well I'm very sorry. Ah, oh, six guineas, so that's... No, it is hoped that in the case of a family of man, his wife and two children living in one room, there's hope that within, by, within a few months time that they would have a reasonable hope of being offered accommodation. That's because at this particular time the number of dwellings under construction that's direct by the corporation and by in Ballymun by the National Building Agency for the corporation are fairly high at this moment yes. and they probably remain high next year. But the corporation at the present time, and this is a matter of concern, are starting to become land hungry, shortage of land to continue schemes. Well, what do you feel you can do now about this whole situation? Well at the moment I'm deadlocked. The only thing I can do is each night look at the paper and uh, hope that I can come up with something there that I can afford or I've told a lot of my friends if they heard of anything to put me in the picture. Do you, do, you feel it's, do you feel it's pretty hopeless this whole business? Well I feel right now it is very hopeless and uh, myself and my wife are very dejected and uh, we can't uh, see anything coming in the near future.
There's two bases of which there's hope. In the next year or so, there should be a fairly uh, substantial reduction in the number on the waiting list, unless the population grows fairly rapidly. Uh, if there's encouragement given to people to purchase their own house, the money's made available, the ground's made available. But beyond that, it'll depend on whether we get the ground to continue resources. And a lot depends then on uh, the control that is exerted by the Department of Local Government. Because there's no house can be built, there's no land can be acquired, there's no scheme can go, be, can go ahead unless these schemes are all approved by the Department of Local Government. And in past years, the situation has been that the schemes have been held up from time to time uh, because of political action in that department. 